here. So we use various methods. So why we use various ones? It offers opportunity for the learners to meet grading criteria to their own learning styles. Again, encompassing initial assessments. Okay. And college, we use initial assessments to work with our students. It's something that we base our lessons around on. Um, I don't think always, because you can't encompass 26 students and pick every learning style. I think you've got to kind of look at the best way to suit each person and sort of make you do and, and develop on. Okay, so what I did, I carried on through this, I've watched the videos, and I did a SWOT analysis. Um, quick overview of each one of them, look at the strengths, opportunities, weakness, and threats of them. Okay, with media assessment, obviously it's visual, it's real time, and there's no debate. So if you've got a, a sort of problem with the assessment and they're, they're not happy with, you can always go back to it and show them where they went wrong or where they did well. So there's no debate about the sort of scenario, what, what they did right or what they did wrong, is they can see it for themselves and highlight it. And the opportunity is technological developments. We in sport use dartfish, um, so we can pick up things in candle. We can look at angles of movement and really develop it and get technical with them and sort of highlight where they're doing well, where they're doing not so well. Um, threats, obviously safeguarding. Something we've got high on a minute. Um, we've got to watch that, we've got to get their permission, we've got to get parents' permission to get them videoed and filmed. Okay? It could be used sort of too much to be relied upon. So we could just sort of skip all assessments, written work, and it would be like sort of relied upon as an assessment method all the time. People will fall back on it going, well, they've done this, they've got the knowledge, they've showed it, and they've highlighted it. Uh, the weaknesses. Some people don't like being filmed, plain and simple. People hate it, get embarrassed, don't like it, um, and they act differently. So they put an act on, they become childlike, or they become very, very serious and sort of forget the knowledge in themselves, okay? Um, Time going through lots to find one piece. Again, so with Mike's size, eight minutes long, and there's certain bits of it we can cut out and pick out. We have to go through, we can go through hours and hours of film, an hour and a half lesson to pick out two or three points where the learners actually learned. Sort of time, it takes time, it takes time to look at it and develop on. Okay, peer assessment. So strengths again. Language, language used in peer assessment. Our learners that we learn now, that sort of teach now, 16 to 19, we can be a little bit out of touch of the language they understand, and we can, because sometimes they're asking me, oh, what does that mean, what does this mean? For them, if they're getting peer assessed, it's the same language they're using all day, day in, day out, so they have an understanding straight away. Classmates, honesty, okay. Moving on to opportunities, can be guided, you can sort of guide them into how you want to assess and look at certain key points. It's quite fast, you can pick up certain areas, and it can be done right there in the classroom, one on one. Okay, it can be developed with varied levels of learners. So you can change it, you can look for, you can give them two or three points to look for and pick each learner specifically. Um, threats can cause friction within the class. If you put one or two learners together and maybe they don't get on so well in the class, it can develop and can escalate into sort of friction, constantly criticising work. Weaknesses, some learners can be too honest. You, you know, you kind of look at the sort of feedback sandwich that we get for assessment. We don't want to just scoot over and give them honest feedback where it's not going to be constructive and they're not going to learn upon. Okay? And it's uneducated feedback. It's only educated to a point as I sat in the class and we're learning together. It's not sort of we go through training to get to where we get to. They're still learning and getting to themselves. So it's sort of uneducated feedback in, in that sense. Okay, observation feedback, looking at sort of witness testimonies, etc. Okay? It can be done by the same person, it can be consistent. If it's done by different people, the sort of grading criteria can change and, and the scope for perception of it can change too. Okay, again, it's fast, and it can be effective. It can be done right there and then. They can learn from it right there. Opportunities, it's instant. It can start. It can be done anywhere as well. So we can do it on the field if we're doing sport, and we can do it in the classroom too. Uh, weaknesses, things can be missed. Blink of an eye, you miss something. Okay, and that's where the media comes in. Threats, that's where media can take completely over witness testimonies. We just film it, and it's done. Simulation, role play. Okay, it's active. It can be real life, and it's working with peers. So we can set any sort of scenario in a classroom, on a field, and give them sort of a sense of scenario, a sense of real life, without having the problem of spotlights looking to fail or pass. Okay? Opportunities, progression opportunities. So it can be sort of added to any situation gets stale or boring, you can always change it up to change the boundaries a little bit, to keep them going, to keep them stimulated. Okay, real life, we've been actually doing that real again. So opportunities, no consequence to learning. They can always sort of learn, keep learning, assess, and if they fail at something and not doing so well, they can be guided another way to sort of develop that. Threats needs to be monitored, so it needs to be assessed all the time, currently assessed, and kept on top of. And the weaknesses, learning can become shy. Again, a bit sort of like in the media, you can become shy in the sense of 
lots of people and the onus is on one person, they can sort of get into a recluse and come to themselves. It can be misleading, so they can do sort of track of what they're looking for. So if they're looking for one point, they can just go off on like a tangent and forget what they're doing. And the objective can become sort of misunderstood and they look to find another objective within that. Yeah. Right, this is back to me again. Responses to assessment. We've all been assessed at one point in our life where your bottom lips hang out and your eyes are watering. You think, please don't say that about me. So I thought I'd hand out some responses that students have had in the past over different assessment methods. And hopefully, if I can get you guys to read them out, it will centre our thoughts on, on how we assess and how we approach assessment equally and to that of students with different learning styles in our class. Thank you. I'll just stick with 10. Does anybody want to go first? Who wants to go for number one? Yeah, I'll go yeah. first, I don't mind. Um, when we have a test, I forgot everything straight afterwards. Prime example, <coughs> isn't it? How about you? I've got number two. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Our teacher takes so long to mark our work, we've forgotten what it was about by the time we get it back. Yes. Number three, I'd like more constructive criticism from our art tutor. She just says, great all the time. When I challenge her, she claims she doesn't want to be too prescriptive. Well, guys. I've got, I was delighted to get 85% for my last essay until I discovered everyone in the group got between 85 and 95%. <coughs> Our lecturer only points out what you get wrong at the bottom of a piece of work, never how you could have got it right. My mate's dad does all the assignments. My mate just word processes them. It doesn't seem to matter. Our introduction to Italian tutor refuses to assess us. He says if we did badly, we'd lose interest, but all of us want to know how we are doing. We have a write our own assessment in our report forms. I never say I'm good at anything because it sounds like I'm showing off. Uh, I understand all the work, but I'm no good at getting it down on paper. Anyone else? That's the last one. For more of that, can we see how diverse everyone's opinion is to how we are assessed? Mm. And therefore, we also have to be diverse, therefore, in assessing the actual student themselves. We have to have the responsibility and consider that teaching and assessment is a complementary activity, and that far too many teachers concentrate on a formative, summative aspect of of assessment so they can achieve that criteria, get that student through and push them to the end of the course. One a lovely man called Scackley in 1990 said the function, this function probably dominates most of teachers teaching because you tend to lead students into their assessment criteria rather than actually assess them in a fair and open way. Just for example, when I'm up in the polytunnel I have to really step back to when it comes to guiding students on how to do something. There's giving example there's showing someone how to do it, there's giving them paperwork on how to do it, there's actually stepping back and letting them do it when I'm observing a student rather than leading them into the right answers. Otherwise you cannot tell whether any assessment has been taken place. I'm going to try your little button, I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> oh, like one. Okay, so teaching and learning must be considered to be complementary activities. I'd like to sum the session up, all oh, considerations to be made. Oh. Is, thank you, is what we think of summative assessment. Summative assessment should not be led. It should be something that is, is, is clear to that of the student following a criteria. Judgment of character. We have to be very judgmental of character when it comes to assessing students, as we can see with all this variety within the room, because it would be really unfair to put a student in a position where he wouldn't be able to do that. Or will it be something to do with the day that they've actually been assessed, or personal matters? You have to consider all of the equal opportunity in assessing and teaching everyone in the class. Interpretation of criteria. When we take on witness statements, we have to be aware that other people can interpret criteria in separate ways. And a student can interpret that way, and bear in mind, bias might exist there. And then often, you often get a great view with LSPs if you take on their their assessment of criteria. They have a lot better understanding when they're working with a group all day of emotional and behavioural issues that might be with that group, which I find incredibly useful. Has assessment any enduring value? Do students feel like it has any value? Or are they here to learn not to be assessed? And I'd like to put the last question to you. Where do we draw comparisons from? Do we draw comparisons with students within a class and compare each other? Do we do it nationally? Or do we do it against 
against the criteria so stringently that they feel like they've failed. And that's how I'd like to end the session. Can I just say one more thing, just on the peer and self-assessment, just to let you know. I'm at Incorporated Maths and everything, but while I was toting up all of the totals and called in a professional judge, and the end result was the students chose the same first and second as the judge. So it really worked out well. And obviously I let them know that. So it was really, really good. Oh, I'm so proud of you all. <laughs>